So I have been challenged by one of my patrons to try Xmonad again and to do so for one month. And uh, I've been talking about this challenge now for at least a month, maybe even two. And uh, it's not because I was trying to hype it up or anything. It's because I've been legitimately procrastinating uh, is the only real word. It's really the only word that describes. I've just been hesitating and not going full force into this challenge just because I don't like Haskell. I don't like Xmonad. I've tried Xmonad before. Now, obviously, I don't have to do the challenge. I could always just say no. I, I've said no to video ideas before, even from people who give me money. But there are so many people out there who really like Haskell and really like Xmonad that I wanted to, you know, give it a fair try because I'll admit that I maybe didn't give it the best shot the previous times that I've tried this. You know, I, you know, I tried it for a week or I tried it for like three days or something like that. And I'd hit a, a wall somewhere where I just could not get past the thing. And, you know, I just don't have the patience for it. So I'd move on. But this time... I wanted it to be different. So instead of going out and using DT's configuration file like I have all the times in the past because DT is the king of Xmonad, I chose this time to start from the beginning. Now, I will say that I did follow some of DT's uh, tutorials on Xmonad. So, so, you know, some things obviously have been the same. But I've also read through the official tutorial on the Xmonad uh, GitHub page. And I have been using it now for a day. So this is my one day with Xmonad, or my first day, I should say, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to stick with it, but I have had some problems. So let's just go ahead and uh, show you uh, my Xmonad as it is right now. So this is my Xmonad as it is right now, and it is uh, very bare. Uh, it's still very, very much in the early stages of customization, configuration, whatever you want to say. I've managed to get my key bindings so I can, you know, you know, open up Rofi. I can quit with Super Q. I can do all the normal things. I've customized the key bindings to the point where I need, need them. I have started using SXHKD just because I have a lot of key bindings in there. The problem is that I've had some problems with SXHKD and that none of my key cords work. I have no clue why. So I have Super GG should bring up GIMP, but it doesn't. Uh, Alt N should bring up Discord, but it doesn't. Um, so there are some key bindings in SXHKD that aren't working. I'm assuming it's because there are some conflicting key bindings between the two configuration files. I'll have to go through those and figure those things out. So that's not really an Xmonad problem, but that's one of the issues that I've come up with so far. Uh, my biggest hurdle so far, and it's not even close, has been the bar. Now, what you're looking at right now is Xmobar, and from what I can tell from the things that I've read online, Xmobar may not be the best bar to use anymore with Xmonad. Apparently, they've had some font issues and some other, you know, crash issues that have just been going on for the last few months, and maybe it's not the best thing to use. But I've been struggling through with it because, you know, Xmobar is kind of the bar that goes with Xmonad. So I wanted to give it a, you know, good, good old college try. But I'm, I've am i failed. I've completely failed with X. I, you know, I have Xmobar up there and running, but it's not running properly. Like you can still see it's still using updating here. And I have no clue why. And I'll talk more about what I've done to try to fix that here in a few minutes. But it also doesn't show the workspace numbers, and I'm not sure why. Again, I've done some Googling, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I have obviously not been able to fix it. And uh, this is the third different configuration file that I've tried in order to actually get it up and running to actually stay running. Uh, I tried some of DT's old configs. I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but you know those are the ones that I had on hand, and I just wanted to kind of get off the, the ground and see if I could you know, actually use them. Those kept crashing. I'm not sure why. They're old. I downloaded them ages ago, so uh, that has nothing to do with DT or anything like that. It's just th those com particular configurations files are old. And the only reason why I even used those was because the default configuration file is non-existent, as far as I can tell. Now, in DT's video... He shows on Ubuntu where there is an Xmobar oh, X default configuration file. That file does not exist on Redcore for whatever reason. So I went to the Xmobar Codeberg site expecting there to be a default configuration file. And uh, I think there was one, but it's not official. And it actually was linked to from a form someplace. It was very messy. I found three different default configuration files. All of them look different. This one here came from Reddit. 
Uh, so again, not mine. I said I wasn't going to do that, but I just wanted something up there to see if I could try to at least get it working. Uh, but I, I've been unsuccessful. This is the closest that I've come to actually having a bar up there and working, but it doesn't have any of the features that are necessary to you know actually be considered a bar for me. I have to have the workspaces for it to be working, and it's just it's it's not, and I don't know why. So let's get into the troubleshooting because that's honestly the troubleshooting thing is where I've had the most problems. So if I go into my Xmonad configuration file, and uh, you know I, I like I said I've I've managed to import a few things that you need to import. I've managed to change the terminal. I've managed to change a few key bindings and stuff like that. I've added a few key bindings. None of that stuff is particularly difficult if you've ever used Lua before or C or any of that stuff. It's not completely different than any of those languages. Yeah, the syntax is a little bit different, but you know, it's similar enough to like Lua or whatever with, with commas and uh, parentheses all over the place. It was not hard to put in my key bindings and, and do the things that I needed to do. So I, I got that far. I managed to set a wallpaper. I managed to get the startup hook working, which I've had problems with in the past. And then I got to start working on the bar. The bar is where I've, I have had, like I said, I've had the most problems with the bar. And I've Googled things, right? So that updating problem that's up there, it has multiple different causes, as far as I can tell. It could be a dependency issue, which is possible, since I'm running Pulse Audio, and that's an also widget. So that's a possibility. But this one here, I'm not even sure what this widget's supposed to be. But the, the point is, it's not there, right? Uh, so it could have multiple, you know, it could be the missing dependency. Apparently, it could be your configuration is set up wrong. You could not be importing the proper thing that you need to import. So, for example, the workspace numbers, apparently, you need to import the dynamic log here in order for it to work, right? And I did that, right? And then you have to do something in your XMO bar, which I've done. Uh, still no dice in terms of actually getting the numbers up there. And the, the issue here is that because there are multiple causes, there are multiple different solutions. And even in the Xmonad documentation, the solution doesn't necessarily always agree with all the other solutions or the, all the other causes. And it's it's kind of a mess. So the real issue that I've had here is that I'm, I use the default Xmonad configuration file that they link to on their website. But their documentation isn't always consistent with that default configuration file. So the best example that I have for this is it's actually the avoid struts line right here. Basically what this does after you've imported the appropriate library is it makes it makes it so that the XMO bar stays on top of the windows and they don't overlap each other. So honestly that should be default you'd think but whatever. You do have to make some changes to your configuration file in order to, for that to work. But in the documentation it says nothing about my layout. It, it points you towards some other area and if you didn't know or if you didn't watch DT's you know video on this you wouldn't know that those two things were actually the same right and that's not the only example of this inconsistency it's all over the place where you know it's called one thing in the default configuration file it's called another thing in the documentation now I think where the problem lies is that the documentation for Xmonad isn't actually the documentation for Xmonad. It's the documentation for Haskell. And those are two different things, whether they like to think them the same or not. Xmonad is a window manager. Haskell is a programming language. They're not the same thing. And they treat them kind of like the same thing. So Xmonad does not have its own documentation. It relies 100% on the documentation for Haskell. And the, the problem with that is that the documentation for Haskell is teaching you how to, you know, program in Haskell, whereas the people who have configured and programmed Xmonad have done things in alternate ways in Haskell that don't necessarily, you know, go together with the documentation. So it, it's not a great solution. And it, it drives me nuts because I'm so new to this and I'm trying my hardest not to go grab someone else's configuration file for at least the configuration for Xmonad. I want to do this all my own. And when I can't rely on the documentation to tell me exactly precisely how to do something because I can't have, I, it can't be halfway there. It can't be half-assed because I don't know anything about Haskell. So it has to tell me, hey, this is what you have to do step by step by step. Now, as I said at the beginning, a lot of this is a skill issue. I can't really blame them to have a very complex programming language and then not having it spelled out for absolute noobs because that's not who it's for. It, it, it's not, 
the documentation can't be just for noobs. You have to, you know, their audience is experienced programmers, not new users to Xmonad. So uh, I can't really blame them, but it's still a problem that I'm facing, right? It's, it's, it's a thing that has come up over and over again where I'm looking for a solution and there are five ways of doing it in the documentation and I don't know which one to use. And it gets worse when you expand outside of the documentation because if you start looking at other people's tutorials and stuff like DT will do things one way and then you'll Google it and find a blog who has done the exact same thing but in a slightly different way. And the issue that I've come across this time using Xmonad is that if you follow you know, DT's ways of doing things, and then you follow someone else's way of doing things and you mix them together, they don't always mix together all that well. Uh, because, you know, they imported conflicting libraries or something like that, and it just gives you errors, right? And it's, it's, it's a, it's a really, it's messy, it, it is my point. Like, I didn't have this problem with DWM and C. I've learned a lot of C messing around with DWM and outside of that project, it actually got me interested in C. So I was actually able to learn quite a bit of that language. Uh, even in my brief times with uh, awesome window manager, I learned a lot of Lua in those brief times. And, you know, I've learned more since I've started messing around with Lua with NeoVim. So I have the capability in my brain to actually learn this stuff, but I've never had this problem that I've that I always have with Haskell. Every time I come here with Xmonad, I have the same issues, and uh, maybe there, there's a possibility that I have a, like a filter on my brain that just can't get past it. I don't know, but it's a problem. So let's just go back to the bar for a couple minutes. It seems the Xmo bar has some problems. Whether they're just my problems or they're actually having some problems, I don't know. Maybe it's a mixture of the two. So what my plan is now is to move from Xmo bar to Polybar. It, that seems to be the thing that most people are doing. I've been looking through the themes and posts and stuff on Unix porn, and the vast majority of people there, in recent posts at least, have been using Polybar or EWW. I didn't have luck with EWW the last time I tried it, so I'll probably avoid that. But I am an expert on Polybar. <laughs> I know a lot about Polybar. I've been using Polybar for years. So I, I am just going to... Scrap my experiment with Xmo bar and put in Polybar. That's something I'm going to work on uh, tonight or tomorrow and see if I can't get that to actually work. I know that there are some workarounds that you have to do in order to get things to, to work because it's not technically 100% one-to-one compliant with Xmonad, but apparently it can be done and I've seen pictures of it so I know that it's true. So that's something that I, I need to do next. The thing that's going to be continuing to be the biggest problem for me after I get the bar thing solved is going to be the documentation not being user friendly. And I need a better, like I looked through the tutorial, the official tutorial, and maybe I need to just stick with that one, right? That That is like 10,000 words or even more of do this, do this, do this right in a row. That's the way you should do it. And I I think that that's what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to follow that tutorial. I may even start completely over again and see if I can't, you know, just follow that instead of following three different places of how to do stuff because following three different ways of doing things is has just not been working. It's just not been working. And I think that if I just follow one and it's the official one, hopefully the official one, or I think they call it the unofficial. One. I, I don't know. It's on their Codeberg so, or their GitHub or GitLab or whatever it is. And so it should be as official as it probably gets. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm go I'm going to try there because I have some big hurdles coming up for this, right? Because there are some things that I have to add in order for this to be a workable experiment for me. The big one, of course, is scratch pads. So, uh, I know that, that Xmonad has scratch pads. I've used them before. And I think that Xmonad has good scratch pad support. I only vaguely... Uh, remember what it's like, but I think that it has good scratch pad support. So that's something that I'm going to have to add in on my own. I also know that there's like a, a library that you can add that allows you to do different syntax for the key bindings and stuff. So you don't have to spell everything out. It's kind of like an abbreviation type thing. I want to add that. I don't even know what it's called, so that's going to be a challenge. So there's going to be some things here that I need to do. So this video has come across a lot as me complaining about Xmonad, but I'm honestly, well, I, I mean, <laughs> I was going to say I'm honestly really excited about the challenge, but that would be partially a lie. I'm 
trepidate. I have some trepidation about my future with this challenge. There's a good chance that I will hit a wall again and just say, screw it. I'm going back to Q tile. It's 100% possible. But there's a part of me that is excited. I, I have been a little bored as of late on my computer. I needed a challenge that was actually a challenge. Red Core has been way too stable. Uh, <laughs> I, it's not like I want it to break or anything, but I definitely I want something to challenge me a little bit. And, ha and Haskell and Xmonad is going to provide that challenge. So I'm a little excited. I'm also I'm weary about it. So because of previous experiences, I know... Uh, that there are some issues that are going to pop up and we'll see how I manage to handle those. So my day one on Xmonad has been very bumpy, but I'm still using it. I haven't logged out and logged back into a window manager yet. Um, so wish me luck. I think that I'm going to need it. <laughs> so that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on my challenge of Xmonad and all that stuff, leave those in the comment section below. I know that I've tried Xmonad before. I know that I've had words with it, and I this seems probably a little repetitious, but I want to give it a real try this time. Uh, I'm limiting my... I'm, I'm not doing six months of Xmonad. I mean, maybe after a month, if I, like, really... I, I You know, I've fallen in love with it or something like that, maybe. But as of right now... A month is probably going to be pushing it, so we're just going to go at a month. So anyways, comments on this challenge in the uh, in the comment section below if you have them. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all absolutely awesome so thank you so very very much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time